Hey guys, and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. Welcome to another live tutorial. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Adidas logo, how it came to be. We're gonna take a look at, a little look at the sort of history of the logo, how it's developed over the years, and then we're gonna jump into Adobe Illustrator and try and recreate it ourselves. Uh, so the idea with these live tutorials, if this is the first one you've joined in with, is that uh, we want it to be a bit of an interactive experience for you guys. Uh, we have a uh, an Illustrator template file that you can download. It's linked, I put it in the chat at the moment. It's also linked in the description below. Uh, so if you follow that link, you can download the exact same template file that we'll be using and follow along from home as well. So uh, in the meantime, I'll be going through the, the kind of history of the logo so you can download uh, the template file in that time, follow along. Uh, I'm also obviously on hand to answer any questions you may have along the way. It doesn't have to be related to the logo we're looking at. It can just be graphic design questions in general and I'll be happy to answer them. So um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun. Um, we've already uh, looked at the Nike logo in our last live tutorial. So if you haven't already, check that out as well. Uh, that was a lot of fun trying to recreate that. And again, looking into the history of the logo. Um, these are really good uh, examples to look at. Obviously, really well-known logos were sort of showcasing and um, the kind of uh, design decisions behind them. It's These are really uh, important things to kind of know about, uh, if, especially if you want to get into logo design. Uh, one other thing to note just before we get started is that we are still running uh, a logo design workshop right now. So that's also linked in the description below. Uh, so it's completely free, but we go through our entire logo design process within this, uh, breaking each step of the process down, how we use it still to this day. We've been using it for years uh, with great success. Uh, you know, we have six figure clients. Um, so you can check that out. We also have some giveaways within that workshop. We have a free uh, logo design template file full of pre-made uh, logo lockups that you can take and customize and it'll save you a ton of time. Uh, we also have a free design uh, workbook, sorry, lost my words there, a uh, 75 page design workbook with uh, different techniques for, uh, you know, getting past things like creative block and that kind of thing. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Um, it's about an hour long, but um, really there's so much good information packed into there. So it'll fly by. Um, so yeah, uh, but we'll jump straight into the actual history of the Adidas logo, so the sort of topic of what we're looking at today. So I've got an article up here, uh, which I've also linked in the chat if you want to check this out separately. Um, so this just gives you a brief run through of kind of how it came to be. So uh, for a start, Adidas, the name, or Adidas, uh, it depends how you pronounce it. I had this last week with Nike, was it Nike or is it Nike? I'm not sure. Uh, so if you didn't already know, Adidas is founded by uh, a guy called Adolf Dassler, whose uh, whose sort of first name was uh, nicknamed as Addy, so Addy Adolf, and then Dassler Das Addy Das. Uh, it was actually their original company was him and his brother Rudolf apparently, and Rudolf uh, went on to split away from his brother and create a rival sports shoe company, which is today known as Puma, which you may have heard of. Um, and so yeah, basically. Adolf Dassler created uh, Adidas and they were similar to Nike, uh, started creating sports shoes. So um, initially it was just Adidas and this was their first logo. So uh, already within here, you can see we've got this running cleat with the spikes and we've still got these three stripes uh, on the cleat itself. Uh, so these were actually, the three stripes were actually a functional thing at first. It wasn't really a uh, a design or you know just an aesthetic thing they were actually uh, support strips for the running cleat to make them stronger and they actually initially experimented with uh, I think two strips and four strips as well so um, it wasn't always just a three stripe thing just um, uh, you know there was actual functionality involved there and um, when he wanted to actually trademark that it was actually another company I believe it says it within here uh, yep, a Finnish sports brand, Carhu Sports. So they actually already had a three-stripe uh, trademark at that time, which um, 
Adolf Dassler bought off them. Uh, so it uh, claims here that it was for 1,600 euros, or um, I don't, I'm not sure that's the equivalent today, uh, as well as two bottles of whiskey. So whether that's true or not, I'm not sure, but um, that's quite interesting to know. And then after that, uh, the trefoil was born. So this was their, their first proper you know, combination mark utilising the three stripes. So you've got, uh, in this one, this is obviously another very iconic uh, Adidas logo, which is now Adidas Originals, I believe it's used for. So you've got these kind of three leaf-like shapes and then the three stripes cutting through them. Uh, so and according to, to this as well, the three leaves uh, stand for the regions that they sold to at the time. So that was North America, Europe and Asia, which is quite interesting. Um, but more recently than that, they then switched to this, uh, what I'm calling the Three Stripe logo. Um, I'm not sure if it has another name, Mountain logo. So that's uh, that's what people also see it as. And uh, the Three star Stripes are to uh, represent what it says here, um, symbolize the challenging path of achieving a goal. Uh, and this was really initially set up for athletes. Uh, so this was, the, I believe it was the Adidas equipment range. So uh, while the Trefoil logo was more used for lifestyle and casual uh, casual wear, uh, the, the Mountain logo was really more specifically towards the actual sports wear that they created and sold. Uh, also says here they did a uh, sort of... Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, a combination with Salomon Sports. I didn't really know about this before. It's obviously not as well known as just the regular Adidas logos, but that's there as well. We're not really going to be looking at that logo or the Neo logo. So this was their most recent uh, kind of sub-brand of Adidas, really. So again, this was for streetwear and things, and it was in the early uh, 2002 this was created. Uh, I definitely don't like this. Uh, mark as much as the other two. I don't think it's uh, nearly as interesting, but hey ho, is what it is. And then we've got an updated word mark as well that they also use from time to time, just with the three stripes and the simple Adidas word mark text. So um, very recognizable. Um, you know, obviously you could see any one of these and know exactly who it is. All of them utilizing those three stripes in some way. Uh, so I've also got an image of here. So this was actually one of the car who um, running shoes at the time. Uh, so they, they all, obviously, as I was saying, they had to buy that trademark off them. And you can see the three stripes here, obviously serving a purpose uh, for support with these running shoes as well at the time. So it's really interesting to see that. It's obviously identical almost to uh, some of the Adidas shoes you'll have seen uh, since then as well. I've also just got a wee breakdown of the history of their logo and how it's developed over the years as well. So uh, I've never seen this Dassler badge logo before, but it's actually a really cool logo. I really like this. I'd love to see like a reimagined modern version of it, sort of cleaned up a bit in something like Illustrator. But I think this is a really cool logo. Uh, obviously not Adidas, but um, you can see how it's developed. The What I find interesting is how consistent the text element has stayed over the years so even from this very first one uh, this was way ahead of its time I think in terms of the style of it really clean uh, you know consistent lines throughout the Adidas text even the Adolf Dassler uh, text is really nice here and this has stayed really consistent you know it's only been slightly updated uh, really since you know 1950 or so which is incredible it's really stood the test of time and we're really just going to be focusing when we go into Illustrator on the marks themselves. So we're our main focus is going to be the mountain logo. That's, I think, the most recognizable one. It's their kind of core logo, if you will, for, for most things. And we'll also give the trefoil logo a go as well. But we're not really going to be focusing on the logo type. But one thing I will um, mention, especially with the mountain logo, is just how precisely it's been incorporated so this may be something you've noticed it may be something you've not really noticed before but how perfectly the d and the i and then the other d line up and meet the lines within the icon it's uh, very precisely done if you zoom into this i'll um, maybe try and do this here just so you can see it a little bit more clearly uh, but 
you know, the top left corner of, uh, you know, the D here is matching perfectly with the, the lower right point of uh, that stripe. And this continues with the I and the other D. So it's very precisely done and it just adds to, you know, how iconic the logo is really. Uh, oops, no, didn't mean to press that. There we go. So um, we'll jump into Illustrator now and we'll have a look at actually designing the logo. So I've already got my template file set up here. So similar to uh, the last live tutorial we did, we did the same thing with Nike. And um, what I'm gonna do is I've got these reference images here, which we're going to kind of trace to show you how you can recreate it and how potentially they were created in the first place. Uh, but what I like to do first, I'm only gonna do this with the mountain one just to save time. It'll take a bit too long to do it with the Trefoil logo as well, but definitely give it a try at home is turn off. If you go to your layers panel, we've got everything set up on layers. So I'm gonna turn off the visibility of, um, this still says Nike logo, but I'll change that. <laughs> so it'll be the Adidas logo reference layer. Um, and I'm just gonna turn off the locks from these layers. So. I'm gonna go up to my design layer and I'm gonna try and create it without any kind of reference. So just from the top of my head, and this is a quite a fun, interesting exercise to try at home, uh, to recreate a logo, especially a well-known logo from the top of your head and see how well you can recreate it without any kind of reference. It can also be a good idea if you're doing your own logos just to see how memorable they are and how easy they are uh, to, to recreate just from the top of your head. So give it a try with your own logos as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just grab my rectangle tool. We've got a black fill and I'm just going to drag out three rectangles. And I'm just, it's obviously this is all just guesswork without any kind of reference or image to trace. So I'm just going to try and space these out equilaterally. So click and drag over all of them. I'll use my align options here just to make sure they're distributed properly. And from this point, I'll grab the left two, drag them down a touch, then take the left one, drag that down a touch. And again, just using my alignment options just to make sure they are distributed so the alignment is perfect between all of them. Now from this point, I'm just going to, again, it's just gonna be guesswork. Let's roughly rotate them. We'll go with something like that, that looks close. Then I'm just gonna grab my line segment tool and just click and drag a horizontal line. So I may need to extend that last rectangle slightly. Or what I could do is just bump that line up a touch. So I'm just creating this line intersecting with them and you can probably already see what I'm gonna do here. Click and drag over all of this, press Shift M on my keyboard to get my shape builder and then holding Option or Alt on a PC, I'm just gonna click and drag through the bottom elements there and then I can just delete that line. And yeah, I can already tell that I think maybe the angle isn't quite right and there's maybe a little bit too much of a difference in the step up of each of these, but uh, there's, you know, my go at attempting that Adidas three stripe logo without any reference. If I turn on my reference layer now, you can uh, see what I have now. So it's close, the spacing is nowhere near what it's meant to be. These are meant to be way more spaced out. So you can see that Maybe the steps aren't actually too bad, but if it was more spaced out, it would be slightly closer to what we have here. Uh, I could even drag it over just to see it more closely. Yeah, so the angle's not quite right, the spacing's not quite right, but you know what? I'm gonna give myself like a, a six out of 10 for that. I don't think it was horrific. Um, could have been a lot worse. But anyway, let's um, jump onto this. What I'm gonna do now is go down to my guides layer uh, and this is something I would recommend you get into the habit of whenever you're designing a logo. It's, it's a really good idea to use guides, especially if you are uh, tracing or referencing an image. You know, So uh, what we definitely subscribe to is doing rough sketches of ideas or concepts first. Uh, it's much easier to get ideas down on a page with a pen or a pencil first, take them into something like Illustrator, and then that's where you would clean and tidy them up. Uh, we already have videos on how to vectorize images as well and use things like the pen tool. So definitely check out the channel if you've not already to see those videos uh, where we'll go into much more detail. In this one, I'm going to assume you already have a bit of knowledge in Illustrator. This one is very 
you know simple to to recreate luckily so we're just really using uh, two tools here i think it's going to be roughly what we've already done with creating that one without the reference uh, so i'm going to grab my line tool first again on my guides layer and what i'm going to do is just flip my fill to a stroke and let's i'm just going to go with like a bright magenta color here and what I always like to do as well is take my stroke value down to something like 0 0.25. So it's really thin, might be quite difficult for you guys to see on screen. But uh, the reason for this is that I can be sure that I'm being really accurate with it. So if I zoom in, I can see that it is, you know, right on the line. If this was up, I'll exaggerate this, but say if it was like four point or something, that's just way too chunky. I can't really see that it's dead on the line of the image I'm tracing. So uh particularly useful if you are actually tracing an exact image if it's you know a bit more rough then it's not as big an issue um, but in this case I want to keep it as accurate as possible and I'm just going to extend this past so the beauty of guides is that you uh, you know you don't have to go straight to the edges I'm just really uh, these are just projecting lines so this is going right through the design here um, what I'm going to do again is grab my rectangle tool Still with the same settings of my magenta stroke and a 0 0.25 um, point. Uh, I'm just going to drag out, you know, just roughly a rectangle here. Now, what I'm going to do from this point is we'll go to the largest of the stripes and let's just extend this right down so it's plenty big enough. Now, what I'm going to do is make sure that the top left point of this rectangle is as close to the top left point of our reference image as possible. So from this point, I'm gonna use my rotate tool. So that's R on the keyboard. And if you're not used the rotate tool, it's actually really useful if you want to make precise rotations. So I'll zoom out a wee bit. It'll be quite difficult to see, but there's a little cross here in the middle here, and that's our point of rotation. So what I want to do is move that point of rotation up to the top left point. So I can do that by holding option, or that'll be alt on a PC click and drag up to the top left and that will sort of snap in there and then we we get this rotate box up here and we can actually enter a precise value so all i'm doing here is just bumping my up arrow on my keyboard and that's just going up a degree at a time and i'm just going to try and get this as close as possible just focusing on that line that's following down again when you're dealing with a very thin stroke point it can be a little bit difficult to see but 31 degrees in this case looks pretty spot on to me uh, you know you could really fine tune it and go like you know 30.8 degrees if you wanted to but i think this looks pretty good so i'll go ahead and click ok and you can see here this is actually um you know creating the the perfect uh, perpendicular line on the top as well uh, in this case though what I'll maybe do is just extend this past as well. So we're just gonna project these lines once more. And then I'm just going to resize this box, just dragging on the right hand handle here and making sure that that's going to the other side. So again, that's close enough for me in this example. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is with this box selected, I'm gonna hold Option or Alt on a PC, click and drag and also hold Shift so I'm basically just dragging out a duplicate, but I'm keeping it on that same plane. Uh, and I'll explain the reason for this in just a second. So again here, with, with this middle one, actually, I'm not even gonna try and line it up too accurately, but I'll do it once more. So Option or Alt, click and drag, and then hold Shift. And with this left-hand stripe, I am gonna make sure that I'm trying to go as accurately as possible. So that looks pretty good. And then from this point, I'm going to click and drag over all three and then again use my alignment options. So I'm using the horizontal distribute center option and that's just going to make sure that these are distributed uh, equally. So the spacing between them is completely equal. Uh, now, if I'd moved this like down or something uh, and tried to do that again, it's not going to uh, align properly because the the center point will have shifted so you can see there that's not working so that's why i was holding shift when doing that uh, and because these lines are just projecting uh, you know we're just focusing on the left and right hand portions of this at the moment um so that's the reason for that um just give me two seconds let me just check in with this 
so just making sure there's no new comments okay so back into illustrator uh, so now all we need to do is get the projecting lines on the top of these stripes so very easy to do as well so what i'm going to do is again just grab my line segment tool what i could actually do is just grab our original line that we set up here uh, and let's just create a duplicate so if you didn't know if you want to create a quick duplicate obviously you can alt drag or option drag you could also just do command c or control c and then command f or control f and that's just going to copy and then paste it in place essentially and again what i'm going to do here is drag this line let's zoom right in and we're going to take the left edge of it again roughly to the left most point of this left hand stripe so similar idea here uh, what we're going to do in this case is press R again for our rotate tool and this is really just to make sure that it is going along that same angle hold option or alt to drag that crosshair in the middle over to that left hand side so that means that point of rotation is going to be from that left hand side and you can see here because we've dragged this horizontal line with our uh, angle of rotation set to 31 degrees this is still this is actually going to rotate it exactly how we want it already because it's remembering uh, what we set last time so if you were to drag out another horizontal line and rotate it 31 degrees we're going to get the angle that we're looking for so i can just go ahead and click ok so this is already looking good what i'll do is zoom out a bit and i'm just going to slightly move this back over that line uh, just so they're definitely crossing over like so that'll do and then we just want to create two more for our other stripes so i'm just again holding option clicking to create a duplicate and again this time i'm going to hold shift once more so this is the exact same reason uh, so again i'll sort of overshoot that middle stripe do it once more and then on this uh, third stripe i want to make sure that this is actually lining up still holding shift making sure it's on that same plane as the first two and if we zoom out we've got these three so now what i'm going to do is select the middle projecting line and then the bottom one again go back up to my align options if you don't see these align options that i've got at the top here uh, just go to window and then click control and that will basically create open up this control panel you can also access them from the properties panel or the actual align panel so you've got plenty of options there this time i want to select the vertical distribute center option so instead of the horizontal we're going vertical and you can see that's going to space them out perfectly as well and this one's lining up absolutely as we want it so that is perfect that's exactly what we want so that's all of our guides set up and you can already see they're basically creating this logo for us um, what I could do is just keep them on that guides layer and then go to my design layer and just go in with something like the pen tool. I guess we'll do that in this case, it's easier. Or, you know, if you want it to be even easier than that, we could use our shape builder tool and just, you know, punch out these shapes from these guides. Let's just do it this way, uh, just because we already have the layer set up. So I'll grab my pen tool. Let's flip our fill and stroke and we'll make the fill color black and i'm really just using these guides you can see my smart guides are going to snap to the points that we want so we'll zoom in here and just quickly speed through this and you can see now that we have the guide set up obviously like i say this is a very simple design in in theory you know in, in practice as well i suppose uh, so this is a nice easy one to do but even if you're dealing with slightly more complex reference images, using guides can be very useful. And uh, we'll show that in a little bit more detail with the Trefoil logo in just a second. So let me just finish this last one. Pan back down to the bottom right here and then back across. And there we have it. So if I zoom out now, that is our Adidas three stripe logo. Let's turn off the reference layer and I'll turn off the guides layer as well and that's what we're left with so much more accurate as you can see compared to my attempt without any kind of reference 
Um, but yeah, very easy. Hopefully anyone following along from home was able to do that relatively easily as well. Now we also have the Trefoil logo. So this one is a little bit more complicated. So what I'll do is go back to my guides layer. Let's unlock that, turn it back on, and I'll just leave my uh, design layer on for the time being. So um, if we break this one down, you can hopefully already see that we've essentially got these three leaf shapes and then we've got these three stripes being punched out of them essentially. So uh, this is a really nice use of negative space with this logo and again, nice use of simple shapes as well. I love this logo. I think it's uh, obviously very iconic. So what I'm going to do in this case is use my ellipse tool and I'm going to do the same thing. Let's uh, give my guide a magenta color and again we'll bump our stroke weight right down to 0 0.25. So this one is a little bit trickier to gauge. What I'm going to do in this case is create a circle. So I'm going to create a perfect circle holding shift and option to scale from the middle and it's difficult to know how big to make this but we'll just have to do this with a little bit of trial and error. So what we're wanting to do is try and match the general radius or circum uh, sorry diameter of this circle to match the curvature of these leaves. Now I've already done this and I can tell you that these aren't actually created with perfect circles as we're about to see here basically so I'm really just looking for this to match up with the bottom and top point of this leaf. Uh, so you'll maybe be able to see that the curvature isn't absolutely perfect, but we're gonna give this the benefit of the doubt in this case. We're still gonna do it with perfect circles just to do maybe a kind of slightly updated version of it. Um, it can be the case as well with um, logos that are a bit older, uh, depending on how they were created in the first place. Sometimes they look very precise and accurate um, and you know, created with perfect shapes, but actually when you look into them, they're not completely perfect. And that's because a lot, and that's also the case that a lot of logos are created with optical balance in mind as opposed to technical balance. So uh, that's something we can cover maybe in another live tutorial. But um, there's a lot of examples uh, that we can that we can draw on with that as well. So all I'm doing in this case now it's holding Option and Shift to create a duplicate circle, and I'm just dragging this across to marry up with the left-hand edge of this central leaf. So those two overlapping circles basically create this leaf shape. So it's not too bad. If I zoom in, you can see it's not absolutely perfect. More so at the top of the leaf, it's uh, slightly sh too shallow using perfect circles, but it's it's fine for this example. So, um, so you would think that uh, just by looking at it, that these are all identical sized leaf shapes, but actually they're not. So... If I was to take these two uh, original circles that we have here, I'm just going to option drag, click these over here. And I'm just going to do this very quickly just to show this. And I'm just going to roughly rotate these, to try and match the roughly the same angle of rotation. And if I try and align, you know, this bottom point here, I'm doing this fairly quickly just to, oops, just to show you this. But if I zoom back out, okay, the angle of rotation isn't that perfect, but you can see that these uh, left and right hand leaves are actually a good bit smaller than the middle one. So again, this is potentially for optical balance. So what I'm gonna do is just delete one of these circles. And again, what I'm trying to do here when I'm doing this is try and imagine the, you know, the outermost point of this leaf uh, on this edge. And I'm just trying to basically align the, the middle of the circle with that. So uh, it's a little bit just, you know, using your eye to do this in this case. Uh, you probably can do this more technically, but in this case, I'm just, uh, you know, using my eye and then I'm just shrinking this circle down again, just looking at the spacing to try and make sure it's even on all sides to get something more accurate. And also making sure that it aligns, it, you know, the top and bottom of this leaf are intersecting with the circle. So I think this, what I've got here, will do. You can see, again, it's not perfect in terms of uh, the curvature of this leaf, but it's fine for this example. So again, in this case, I'm going to option click to 
copy that circle and because this is you know quite consistent on both sides it should just be the same diameter and then we just need to sort of fine tune this move it in slightly so like I say the curvature isn't perfect these aren't created with perfect circles but I'm just going to use circles as an example here uh, so what I can do from this point is click and drag on the two circles making up our left hand leaf and we can just simply option click and drag hold shift to duplicate them and if you've got your properties panel set up I'd recommend doing that because we have these little shortcuts in here to flip these horizontally so I'm just going to click this little shortcut it would help if I had the correct point of rotation selected let's do that again there we go and that's just going to flip them and I'm just going to again just using my eye roughly position these in here now what I actually want to do from this point is group each pairing of circles together because we'll want to make sure that these are distributed properly again similar to what we were doing with the previous three stripe logo so with our right two circles selected I'm just going to press command G or control G on a PC we'll select our middle two circles same thing command G and then the right two circles command G so that means if I click and drag over all of them again I'll use my horizontal distribute center shortcut and that's just going to make sure that they are uh, distributed perfectly so that's almost it the last thing we need to do is create some intersecting areas to knock out the three stripes so I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool nice and easy and again these should be consistent in size um, when I was checking this earlier they don't look that consistent when you go to duplicate these as you're about to see so I'm just doing this relatively quickly at this stage um, what I'll do is just again hold option and shift just to drag this up so you can see this gap here it looks bigger than the one below it could just be that my reference image here isn't perfect you know um, so we've dragged that one up what I can do here is a shortcut is just press command D or control D and that's just going to do the same action again so uh, it's just duplicating and moving it at the same uh, amount so I can be sure that these are already spaced out evenly the last thing I'll maybe need to do is just drag the widths out just to make sure that they are going to intersect with our circles like so so that's our guides actually all set up and in this case I will be using the shape builder tool it's just going to be a bit quicker in this instance so uh, I've got all of this selected what I'll maybe do is just copy this up to our design layer so we'll just do it like that and I'll uh, sorry just to explain there I was holding option as I clicked uh, the wee dot on the right hand side of my layers so that's an easy way of duplicating objects to a new layer uh, so I've turned off my guides now and now we're just on the design layer let's make sure this is definitely all selected press shift M on my keyboard and now I've got my shape builder tool and we'll change our fill color to black and we'll remove the stroke although I don't think it actually does when we go to create it so from this point because we've already got our guide set up it's really just a case of clicking and dragging on the shapes that we want to create so nice and easy and this should all work out nicely so just using my uh, reference image to know where to where we want to create the positive space Again, very simple to do this with the shape builder tool it's so much easier now with, with that at our disposal now it's just these bottom shapes here and that should be us so what we can do in, in a situation like this where you've got still got all of these magenta lines uh, because we are only on this design layer every other layer is locked what I can do is just you may need to yeah so th things get grouped together as well sort of a little bit randomly when you're using the shape builder tool so what I like to do is just click over everything uh, the shortcut to ungroup is shift command G or that's shift control G so I just hit that a few times it just makes sure everything is ungrouped what I can do from here is just click on one of the filled areas so we've got this shape on the right hand on the left hand side sorry 
and we have a shortcut up in the top uh, of our control panel again make sure you have the control panel enabled for this and there's a little icon here it's sort of two boxes with a wee arrow and this is called select similar objects so if i click that what it's doing is it's selecting all of the objects that also contain a black fill and in this case a magenta stroke and what i can do here is just press command x and just to make sure i don't delete our other example because that is on the same layer i'm just going to click and drag over where we have all of these guides hit delete and that's got rid of them and now i can just press command f or control f to paste our original shapes back in place let's turn off the stroke and there we have it. So like I say, this one isn't actually, you know, pixel perfect to the original. Let's turn off the layer. But I mean, looking at that, you'd be very hard pushed to tell that it's not the Adidas Originals logo. But that's just a wee process of how you can go about creating it in Adobe Illustrator. So um, yeah, I'll jump back over here. Uh, like I say, if you have any questions at all, even anyone watching this retrospectively we always check up on our youtube channel so if you have any questions uh, if you're watching it please just leave them in the comments down below as well and we'll do our best to get back to you uh, but i hope everyone watching enjoyed this i hope you had a go at home if you've not already be sure to download the template file and give it a go and for anyone who's joined late remember we've got our free logo design workshop as well which is also linked in the description below so be sure to check that out and yeah, we'll keep doing these. Uh, I believe the next logo we'll be taking a look at is the Apple logo. So if you enjoy these, keep an eye on the channel. We will announce when that is going to go live as well. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.